right, and here we go. Another uh, another amazing edition of uh, Pinball Preacher. And uh, today, we're going to think about the beast. Man, um, some chick on one of my friends... Uh, on one of my friend's lines. Wow, man. She, uh, <laughs> she said some pretty brutal things, right? <laughs> and, but it caused me to think for a second. And, um, even though I don't agree a hundred percent with what she's saying, at least, I, I don't know, man, I gotta, I gotta like back up and take a look and see if whatever, whatever that is is going to chew my arm off. Um, but she's, uh, whew, wow, man, way upset and, uh, very, um, in, in a certain sense, she's kind of like me. It makes me smile a little bit because she's authoritative in what she says, right? There's no, um, there's no, uh, she's not coloring it, uh, to make it pretty. And, uh, but it caused me to think about the beast. And so if you've been following my podcast, uh, whatever this is, um, you, uh, should have gained the idea that, uh, what I see is a map in the book of revelation. In other words, what we should do, what we should heed and how we should seek to what fulfill prophecy, which speaks of having to do something, right? Um, and so, uh, there's things that I see like the 144,000 are actually the six days of a week. Um, each day is times a thousand. So each hour is times a thousand. Um, because it does mention in spots in scripture says in that hour, you have to pay attention to these things. Uh, or they just go flying by and you're, you know. It's okay to let somebody lead you that knows what's going on uh, and not to know so much. It's, it's excellent to be not, you know, unburdened by that type of thing. That's why teachers are judged more harshly, but they're also expected to lead you correctly. Um, so the 144,000, mm, that's actually a six day week. The place prepared for the woman. Now remember, uh, to me, the woman, um, people want to believe that a woman has no seeds. That's baloney. A woman has two seeds, sons and daughters. Sons, sons of God, sons of man, etc. Good. Whisked off to heaven, bound by the law, rule with an iron rod. The other part, though, the woman can be tempted. So if she was to have a daughter, that's why the dragon waits for it. But the place prepared in the wilderness... Remember what Jesus said, uh, that uh, the Sabbath was made for man? That's your hint. Prepared. Um, man, his indecision or his wrong decisions, his bad decisions, are defilement with the woman. The choice. The choice between the two things to do. Um, but the 1260 days, uh, there are... 1,248 hours annually in a Sabbath, okay? You add up all those days. There's 1,248 hours, and that leaves 12 hours to make it 1,260 for the last day. Uh, or I'm sorry, the last night, okay? And what does it say? After the last night, um, there will be no more... Uh, need for darkness because the Lord will provide the light. And it's like, then somehow darkness must be providing a light or some kind of a service, right? And it does. Uh, under In the daytime, we run during the law. Uh, we're bound by God's statutes. Uh, actually, his law is unbreakable. You can't break God's law. It's a blessing uh, or a curse. Um. So it defines everything from heaven to destruction. And uh, so during the day, we walk in the light, right? Exposed God's law, 
um, reflect shining upon us to expose our deeds and so that they're governed right uh, at night um, nobody works but you do have a light from the moon which is reflective in nature uh, the moon also represents a woman actually a woman's menstrual cycle actually follows the moon um, and you have a, a pillar of fire which provides a limited amount of light um, much the same as a mountain if you get too involved with it it's going to burn you but it doesn't allow you to travel as briskly and into the distance um, as fast so you have these two periods of time day and night so the last night and then when the Lord provides the light is to say when uh, we realize what evil is for um, because it obviously existed in Genesis uh, 1 at the fall uh, before things went all awry it was that their eyes were opened to it and as soon as they saw evil then the image of God takes over you feel like evil needs to be corrected uh, adjusted taken care of right man's uh, version of that is to destroy try to destroy evil and you can't because you're just planting more evil so uh, that's why Jesus came and tried to impart great wisdom to us to say uh, you say you know destroy your enemy I say love your enemy feed your enemy clothe your enemy in other words whatever it is that's in the darkness has to be called out of the darkness you have to be the light uh, of, in the world right uh, we have to be like him we have to understand that if somebody doesn't know if they're a pigeon or a fire hydrant or a, a person <laughs> of some sort and maybe even picking and choosing how that is defined that person needs love not an attack um, they need respect and understanding uh, for what it is that they're doing if you decide to attack that situation anything that you water especially with God's law is going to grow in order to teach you that God's law is what's in charge and not us the beast I believe I'm gonna check into it a little further uh, and cement everything together but when you see that number 10 okay number 10 is perfection that's God in charge okay when you, I know you want to say 10 kings and 10 nations and no look at the numbers calculate the numbers of things all right and you'll be uh, by far that much better with your understanding especially that book of Revelation which is not the monster story that people think but a blessing and a roadmap and it's killing us
must be feeling holy today. I mean, come on, that, that deserved an aw shit, didn't it? Oh, yeah. contacted a company that's actually in Los Angeles. Uh, they do simulation stuff. And uh, Quantum... Uh, Quantum Gravity Corporation. Something. I don't know, but... Um, I hope they get in touch with me because they appreciate strings like I do. Good test subject. Like <laughs> At least to ask about my life, right? Pretty intense flippage. Wait. 
out to Salt Lake City. Good grief, did you see that? I was about a chicken to the policeman's ball. That was, that was Deacon if there ever was, man. I, you know, like, hockey, right? little sideways folks uh, how do we do this let's see how about this way uh. are you still good yeah I think that's good I want you to be missing half of the thing there, right? Yellow one. Next city, Indianapolis. Well. Save those. You, you can when you plug that little hole right there. Moves you to the next level. Shoot the path. Hey man, shoot the stoplight. Root gear. You know, it's like why not wait until it's all filled up, ready to blow. 
All right, so. Ready to blow, blow, blow. <laughs> stuff they still work man prayers are prayers somebody's trying to put love on you it works there's no there's no limits to that at least then oh nice very nice what I say Rise thank you Lord I matched <laughs> when he says that nice very nice all right let's look at scripture How about, uh, Isaiah, John, and Mark. We don't usually pull Mark too many times. Isaiah 52, 3. John 9, 2 to 6. And Mark 7? Well... How about Mark 7-7? Seven, seven. And because I'm curious and I looked at my phone and it just happens to be 10 o'clock and <laughs> one second. All right. Uh... Oh, battery powers at... 2 5 and today is May 2nd, so that's 5 2. Hey, weird, huh? So we said Isaiah 52 3. got the Darby in here, man. Let me... I must have been doing some research. Let's go for that English standard. For thus saith the Lord, you were sold for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. Sounds like the law to me. And then we had John Two to six. And I like when it picks up right where it should. Uh, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not this man sinned or his parents, but the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Remember, nobody works in the night. Night is coming when no one can work. We just talked about that. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said he's, these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud. And then 
we pick Mark 7 7. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Wow. Wow. Nathaniel busted the chops. Holy moly. See something funny? It says, oops. Yeah, I don't know, man. I know you're not supposed to make martinis the wrong way because you can bruise the... Uh... Yeah, that's kind of weird, but that's all right. This is my last beer. God with you 
Is your heart broken? Or are you all proud and puffed up? Kicking everybody's ass because they're not good enough. He's going to kick your ass. He's going to kick all our asses. You're just in time for the Harley We are Davis like in big time trouble tour. here. And my camera's still out of whack. I might as well line it up now, right? Or, well, that side, that side. I guess I got as much as I can get. Yeah, you pinball people, uh, I appreciate you stopping in. things are lined up for for the utter peoples the cows the utter peoples the cows of Bashan they need to learn too all right you ready let's go Milwaukee come on next video Las Vegas lost wages to go and I uh, boy two miles to go all right Chris be careful be careful buddy we don't need to uh we don't need to waste our shortcut here damn it I thought there was no speed limit in the desert, officer. Do you remember that? They actually had parts of the U.S. where they uh, where they took the speed limit away. They, they took the speed limit away. You could drive as fast as you wanted. But you know what they would give you tickets for? Excessive fuel consumption. Damn, we blew all the way past Las Vegas and made it to St. Louis. Take medication for your 
ailment. And you're like thinking, if I deny what it is that I feel, then guess what? I am like, uh, I'm like Peter. Right? I'm buckling under pressure. I'm not believing that God can save me and help me and all that, right? What have I done? Man, I missed the mark. Why? Because I was a pussy. <laughs> Sorry. Fear sucks, man. Fear is a hard thing to deal with because it causes you to do things that you could... You, learn to drive, you could be a damn hero. Okay? You could be a hero. But because you're afraid, you're just another loser. Just another anybody. You know, but... Not having fear doesn't mean that you're a jerk. You know, it's... Use that no fear for good reasons, right? Firemen, I mean, they, damn, they're running into buildings on fire, dude. Are they heroes? Absolutely. You know? But we don't need to wait for tragedy to strike in order to be heroes. Okay? That is a lie. We don't have to wait for tragedy to strike to be a hero. You can be a hero every second of every day. Every moment of every day. Because your eyes are going to show you things that, where you can help. You know? I was on my way to work one morning. And you know what? I looked at the clock and I'm like... I, I pulled I pulled onto this off-ramp and there were so many freaking cars. I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? It's never like this. I, all I could think of... All I could think of was, oh my God, is like the traffic turned that bad here, like within the last seconds of the day? <laughs> well, not the last seconds of the day, but you know, like everybody fighting to get to work, right? And it was a, uh, uh, yeah, it was like bad. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so screwed. And then what happens? I see this old lady sitting on the side of the road. And she uh, she's in a wheelchair, and she's got the trunk open. And there's all these people, all these people, a whole sea of people that could be helping this lady. They're stuck in a light, for Christ's sake. They ain't going anywhere. We've all missed the mark. The clock's set. There's nowhere, no business all those cars could have made it to by 9 o'clock to get to that job on time. It was impossible. It was impossible. There's no freaking way <laughs> and and like here she is you know uh, uh, some boom Where'd you learn to drive, son? I didn't learn how to drive I learned how to park my car and go help somebody that's exactly what I did I looked over and I saw I saw a license plate on a truck at 666 on it and I said you know what not on my shift you ain't winning here, asshole. <laughs> and what did I do? I, I drove my car. I had to park on the on the wrong, well, not on the wrong side, but on the left side of that on off ramp. Sorry, on off ramp. I guess you could go the other way if you really wanted to. Um, and I did. Everybody else was all concerned with themselves and not helping this poor woman. And you know what? I said, ah, shit, I don't care, I'm going to be late anyway, what's the difference if I'm 10 minutes late or 2 hours late, I'm going to help somebody, I'm going to do the right thing, I'm going to do what everybody else is refusing to do, because they got to please their money people, screw that, you know what happened? I, I had to put a tire on her car. They didn't know how to work the goofy ass jack, you know that thing. And guess what happened? A miracle happened, actually. You wanna know why? I know my clocks are right. <laughs> I used to. That was when I used to. I used to set my clocks because I've always, you know, I'm an IT guy. I'm, a, I'm a, a data man. I want things perfection and stuff to be right. 
you guys that are renaming your files, you know, with all this, uh, that whole thing where you put the year first and then you split the month so that way your files are actually in order, you know, I mean, you only got 99 years in order to, you know, have everything line up. But it's like, yeah, that was my idea. A long time ago. I used to do things on my videos where I said star date. Uh, and I said star date. Oh, three. Well, today's star date would be, uh, would be, you know, star date. Two, three, oh, five, oh, two. And then I'd throw the 24 hour time in behind it. And maybe even the seconds. <laughs> you know? Like to have a point of time that was just jammed into a into a corner and meant something. Man, what but yeah, I know my clock was right. You know what happened when I pulled over to help that old lady? A miracle. Because I pulled the jack out of her car, changed her tire, talked to her for a second. She wanted to give me two dollars, and I'm like. Lady, you probably don't. Have, I'm looking at the the car that you're driving, and that two dollars would be better off in your gas tank, or take it to church and dump it in an offering, and give it to somewhere where it matters. Because I'm like getting ready to ha take off and go and make more. All right. And guess what? I got to work, and I was on time. I was on time because I got bravery for the right reason. I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna be that person that didn't care uh, and just shine somebody on that needed help. That's our problem in this world. And he's going to teach us. 209 miles to a gallon. One way or another, we are going to learn. Yellow light. He will, he will remove everything from us so bad that we won't have a, but a choice to depend on each other. That time could even be coming. I mean, we got people sitting on nuclear war buttons and shit. And, like, that's okay. Where are the voices to, to say we shouldn't do this? Dallas, 148. We're being stupid. You want this piece of dirt that, I, that my people are on? That's fine. All I ask is that while we're serving you, old king, uh, you know. Let us let us do it in a kind way. You know, be kind to us. All that stuff like Daniel talked about, you know. My king is telling me to live in your lands <laughs> and to serve you and so on and so on. Hey man, run the red light. Have to be saving them balls for later on or something. Man. Mystery rider lit. I'm already got one extra ride. Ball. I need another one. Next, next city. Third gear. Hey man, shoot the Harley. Destination Seattle. It's so rough to try so hard and then like you get punched in the face. That's what that was. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing worse than what do they say, uh, no good deed goes unpunished. You know what you know what happens when that happens when no good deed goes unpunished? That's God making sure that you meant it. If you meant it, you won't care. You'd be like, yeah, all right, that's okay. Not stopping me, you bad guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, shine like my Lord would have me shine. I'm gonna be somebody that you know, that good and faithful servant guy, where where. 
commends you for your service when you show up at your dust. Killed somebody and then I decided to sacrifice myself. 40, for, great, like it would yeah. make a difference. Mystery <laughs> ride. Oh. Catch and flip. Well. faster this way. Four miles to Portland. 
destination. Hurry up and grab that pass. Hurry up and the pass. Next city to Denver. Nice shot. Pass collection. Hurry up and the ramp. Denver. 224 miles. say that term of grace of God, you know what I mean? I don't know what it really means. Yeah, grace is not something to take advantage of. Grace is like grace period. It's the time where you should be paying for your bill, and God has decided to give you a break instead. I say my little digital pals. Look out, here it comes. My little ones and zeros. Oh man, nice try. Yellow light. Destination, Sturgis. I 
sometimes that ball is spinning, you know? That ball is spinning, and it grabs, gets traction, next thing you know. Bummer, man! Alright. Oh. trying to avoid that so I can save that shortcut for later. Hurry up and grab that pet. Sturgis. There's my ball. Nice shot. See? I was nice, kind. New York. 329 miles. Didn't ruin my digital pals had consideration and I was blessed with a open mouth insert foot. Uh, it's a blessing, right? It's a challenge. It's an opportunity to trust God to get me to Milwaukee. Um, yeah. He's in control of everything, even a crazy ass pinball game. 300, that's New York. States to go, 14 seconds, not looking so good. Yep, there's that number, 30. <laughs> right on schedule, man. Ay, ay, ay. How does he do it, man? 26 mil! That's God's number, 26. And we're like, what? Yeah, the tetragrammaton, when you add it up, the gematria, it equals 26. There's numbers, guys. There are numbers, and they actually mean stuff. Pay attention. You already see, you know, like, it'll help you to remember scripture, too. Hey, 33 miles, ball number three. And Detroit. Detroit is a three.
Next city. Skip those lions. Sounds like to test the lion, right? But the testa is actually the, uh, the part of the seed, the shell, that the seed has to break through. Yeah. Stop. Hard. 
go, or yeah, whatever you want, Lord. Yeah, I had a good time at, at that school 38. We played hooky at lunch and went to the candy store we weren't supposed to go to. Came back to find out that the whole screw school was raptured, right? Only person left, creepy janitor. Where is everybody? Oh, they're in the auditorium. We got hauled up on stage. And Mr. Testa had us empty our pockets of all our goods. So, boys, where you been? Oh, I love Jolly Rancher Apple. <laughs> and then I got suspended. Well, actually, I think we all got suspended. And you figured at least the people that got suspended would hang around with each other, but I don't know. They went home all afraid of their parents and whatever. And, um, all I know is that I didn't have anybody to hang out with, man. It sucked. I thought being able to skip school would be such a cool thing, right? And, and it really wasn't. It really wasn't. It was, uh... It was lonely. You know what's and you know what's funny? It taught me you know what lesson it taught me? I never missed school ever after that. I always went. They couldn't they, they wanted to take me out to buy clothes, you know, clothes are falling off me. Oh, I'm a, you gotta go to school. My friends, you know. <laughs> you need to go to the dentist. San Francisco. No, 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 my friends. Hey man, gotta go to school. Oh, boy, those are rough when they get ejected like that, man. No choice. Only thing I can say, must be some good scripture coming. <laughs> and I don't match twice in a row. So, there we go. Ride. Ride to live. Psalm 82.3, John 5, 2-7, Isaiah 1.8. Let's read them. What did I say? Psalms, right? I forget Psalm eighty two three. Oh, that's eighty two. That's the Sons of Man one. Oh, wow. Bam. Oh, that just flew out of my mouth, didn't it? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless, maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Uh, remember. The fatherless are those who don't know the father, okay? The afflicted and the destitute, they are the suffering servants. They're the ones on the other side of the law. They are numbered amongst the transgressors, <laughs> okay? People of sorrows, because they're not doing what God said. Uh, man, like, can you not see it? Come on. What do we say, Isaiah? Did I say Isaiah 5, 2 to 7? Ah, crap, I can't remember what I said. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it and he looked for it to yield grapes but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done for it? He gave us the law, okay? We gotta follow that thing. 
but in the spirit, not in the letter, because the letter makes you kill each other. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and briars and thorns shall grow up. And I will also command the clouds that they should rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, for behold, bloodshed for righteousness. But behold, an outcry. Wow. John 1.8 He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. Hi. Come on, guys. What the hell do you need? An engraved invitation? some lake of fire, you know, like, wasting our lives now, instead of living according to God's plan and law. Nobody's out of your jurisdiction, Lord. seed again. birthday and I worked at Mike Barney's Super Sports Nissan and you know what it was also my buddy Tony's birthday Tony DiBenedetto DiBenedetto uh, they call him Tony Bag of Donuts he looked like Fat Albert only as, a, as a, like an Italian guy but he was still an R.A. dude you know he was pear shaped uh, but like I said a good guy, man. He feared the Lord. He would always talk about, whoa, like God, like he would raise his eyebrows, like, whoa. Well, guess what happened? Uh, the master technicians of Mike Barney Super Sports Nissan decided that they would take out Tony and Chris for his birthday. And they did indeed take us out <laughs> for a little bit. And for a little bit. But then we had our second coming. Allow me to explain. They decided it was a great idea to head all the way into Canada to go to a strip club. Uh, because in, in Canada, they showed everything. You could see the fuzz. 
So that was the big deal. And we went to a strip club, drank beer on lunch. And then when we were ready to come back, we hit the border and it was all jammed up full of cars and we couldn't get across. <laughs> so we were stuck in traffic for I don't know how long, man. Uh, like a long time. And when we got back, our service manager was really pissed. Pissed off. We walk into the shop and he's like, you two are, he's talking to me and Tony now, you two are fired and all the rest of you get back to work. <clears throat> and guess what happens? Mike Barney, little Jewish guy who owned the place, he comes into the service bay and and he says, and if you know Mike Barney, here's his voice. You ready? What the hell is going on here? <laughs> that's how he's, that's Mike Barney. And uh, he, he walks up to the master technician, the guy who orchestrated this birthday party. Me and Tony are sitting here like, oh my God, we just got fired on our birthday, dude. And he has a chat with Mike Barney. And all he does is he says, you hear him, he says, ah, bullshit. And he, he turns around and starts to walk away from, from Mr. Barry Clark, uh, prima donna head technician, wizard of the place, right? This guy's good, man. He's a great. You want your, you want things done right to be fixed. This guy is like God incarnated into a technician by the book. Everything great. But, he, ah, bullshit! And he turns around and starts walking away and then guess what happens? He he goes, everybody back to work! And then, he, and then he, he yells that as he's headed in the other direction. And then he stops and he turns around and he goes, you're rehired! And you got a raise! <laughs> that was my birthday in uh, 1988. <laughs> yeah. And then I moved back to California after leaving the Marine Corps in 1989. And one of the first things I experienced was, uh, well... An earthquake the first night and then in 1989 later when I had my apartment building and some kid had mowed me down and run me over in the street on my motorcycle Sean Heil I had to chase that kid down into a subdivision to tell him don't leave a scene of an accident dude just I'm okay but don't leave things broken. Don't leave things empty. Don't leave things incomplete with people wondering what the hell's going on to chase you around. Yeah. Sean Heil. And then while I sat in the... Well, they, what they called it then was they called it... What they called that, they call everywhere else now, at least here in New York, is what they call an urgent care center. But it was like a small hospital on the corner of a, you know, of an intersection, Warner and um, Warner Avenue and Beach Boulevard. And I remember sitting in there and watching that earthquake happen in 1989. That day, that's that's how I remember the day that the kid ran me over because when I sat there watching. Uh, baseball after some kid had almost killed me on my motorcycle, or he tried to. Uh, it was kind of an exciting experience, actually. Uh, I was banging on the fender of his car, staring at him in the face as he's driving me into the median. I got no place to go. Car versus motorcycle usually doesn't turn out too well, because well, there's a weight advantage, right? David and Goliath. And I'm beating the shit out of the side of his car, going, move over, what the hell's wrong with you? I got my... <laughs> And the next thing I know, he's gone. He's off on the right side of the road. And I can't remember how it happened, but I am sitting in the left turn lane, staring back at him like as to say, what in the hell's going on here? And then later on, I found out from witnesses, they said that I had slid my bike 
about 150 feet on its side, and then all of a sudden it just popped up on its wheels, and I was great. And somebody actually drove by in a, in a convertible MG, and he said, You're the best freaking motorcycle ride I've ever seen! As he drove by, trying because he was stepping on it to catch the light. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not anointed. I'm not protected. I'm just a, I'm just another nobody. Just like you. Destination? Chicago. Chicago. I love Chicago. There goes that mystery rider again. 87 miles. Chicago. Cats, hurry up. Thank you. I was silently begging God there to be able to collect that patch. Hey. Some of the best patch you could ever have in life is the first patch. <laughs> bother you guys that like I'm processing like 15 balls flying all at once and <laughs> everything if you knew what my brain worked like uh, I don't know I maybe they could hook it up to something and go holy shit <laughs> they would they would I know they would be like, my God, this thing is on fire in there. How is it that you just don't like self-destruct, head explode, boom, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. Um, you know what it is? Uh, if you live and do what you do and love, you would be amazing. And, and just the kind of things that you can pull off. Because God will bless you. Oh man, nice try. If you don't tell a lie, guess what happens? You don't have to sift through. You don't have to sift through your bullshit stories trying to figure out, you know, what did I really say? You know, how do I cover my ass, right? Truth is a wonderful thing to live in. Uh where it's sad is, you know, some people are afraid, and, and it causes them to lie, you know, they're afraid to tell the truth, but that's like, you know, ultimately it's, you can't look at it as like an asset, you know, yeah, I can just fabricate a bunch of bullshit, you know, create crazy ass videos on YouTube that, you know, show, Man, I've seen some crazy ass stuff. I, I when, when Facebook said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you can't trust what you're seeing <laughs> on YouTube, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I mean, they're showing, you know, they're using video editing technology to like do everything under the sun, you know, like. 
image, you know, showing tsunamis, the monsters, the asteroids hitting the Earth, holes that are sucking, you know, uh, planets into oblivion. Like, you know, this is happening on. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is happening on Uranus. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like a big hole. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, it's nothing to pay attention to, I guess. <laughs> Depraved bunch, ain't we? Anything to get anybody to pay attention to us. Instead of what's good and what's useful. Oh, shit. Uh, I said good. I said good. I deserve to fall on that one. I'm not good. I'm like everybody else. I don't do it, but... Just like Tony Montana said, I know how to hide, how to lie. But I also know that, that we won't be what we can be if we don't have the balls to be there. That's the bottom line. I'm going to get out of here. We'll come back and finish this game after a while. Maybe it will be there. Maybe it won't. Maybe I'll be here. And maybe I won't. Hmm. I hate this job. I hate this job. I don't want to be here. I know what heaven looks like. It's this place where you are a king. And you are responsible for everybody. And you know what? Everybody else is a king too. And so everybody else is responsible for you. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. I'll use this time as best I can to hopefully point you in the right direction. So you can stop ruining each other. Let go of your rights, your opinions, your judgments. Because if you don't, you're marked, you're marked by the beast. There's somebody with a little box of law on your forehead thinking that you know what you're doing. That it's okay to kill animals and each other even, right? Uh, yeah. God willing, I'll be back. If not, well, I don't know. Only I'll do, he's the one who holds the keys to death in Hades, right? So I'll do whatever I can do while I can do it. And I know that, uh, that he holds the, uh, 
he holds my ticket out. But I love you guys. I do. Uh, I have solved the gap theory between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. And I also have a valid and a theologically, scripturally backed theodicy, which is the justification of evil that God created it and justification of God's creation of it and if you do not believe that God created evil, then I encourage you to pick up a King James Bible and read Isaiah 45, 7. And, uh, and if you think that the day that's coming is going to be wonderful, this rapture, uh, you should maybe check out um, Amos, okay, 5, 18 to 20. Somewhere in there, 22, you could go a little further, but yeah. And uh, maybe you'll understand a little bit more about what God is doing to our world right now. Okay? Shalom.